Hello, welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Barb. And this is the last Varos coffee grinder. This is the ultimate last one that's going to leave our shop. Uh, this is a 1.1 that I'm going to convert into a 2.0-ish. And it's become an ish because we had all of the remaining 1.1 stock. Uh, there were three, four cases. And we had those shipped along with all of the Pharos parts that were kicking around there. Uh, axles, plates, <laughs> how many springs? Oh, thousands. Thousands of springs. We had them shipped here, our shop in Idaho. And over time, I've been converting 1.1s into 2.0-ish. And by ish is that at certain parts ran out sooner than others. And uh, the, the little pointer ran out, the top, the top plate with the markings ran out. Uh, three grinders ago, we ran out of the bottom plate. Uh, so the, the 2.0 has the catch cup, a spring plate, a short axle, and a solid bottom. This is my 2.0, okay? But little by little, rather than say, oh, we, we need top plates, Minimum order, thousand. No, we don't need a thousand. We need just a few. But anyway, it's become more issue as time's gone by. Interestingly enough, this is the first Pharos. This is number 001. I don't know if you can see on the bottom. Just to prove it, okay? It's got all the it looks little. Looks like 100. It's upside down. Uh well. There you go. That's why we, we that's why we made it round, you know, and um, had to practice making the numbers there. Um, part of it was that we debuted this grinder on April first, twenty eleven, and um, people thought it was a joke. And as it turns out, the joke was on us because we had spent a few months making one grinder. It was a winter design project, and you could make 10 sets of parts for the same price as one right. set of parts. E-machine shop, I think, so is where, made 10. where we had the plates made. And we had no idea, really. We knew how to make a thing, but we, manufacturing was a completely different story. And how do you make 10, or how do you make 50, or 100, or, as it turns out, 1,145 of the Pharaoh's 1.0. We just called it the Pharaoh, so there was no 1.0 at the time. But it was, we, we had to figure all this out, and the, these bolt covers, the, these are all critical components. And these three plates have to be parallel to one another, to, or else the burr is, is going to be completely off. And so th these plastic covers we made with this, this is the original little jig, little jig, and would take a, a regular tubing cutter and cut them off at that line. Now, if they were a little too short, that was a problem. We would take, take them and line them up, and you could find the ones that were too short and the ones that were a little longer. So it's not a very precise thing. So to make them this precise length, we had a, a flatbed knife sharpener. And Barb would sit there and zit, 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 zit. if they were too long, she would measure, zit, zit, measure, sand, measure, and until they were correct. This part, this was another challenge. This was the top hopper, which was cut. This was either acrylic or polycarbonate, and it was cut with a, on a chop saw. And once again, there she is with the flatbed sander sanding, measuring with a caliper, sanding, measuring with a caliper until it was precisely parallel. That was the most important thing is the sides had to be parallel. And then we, <coughs> the hopper, the hopper was cut out of a four inch ABS pipe, black pipe from the hardware store using this precise precision tool leading again to normalizing the parts. So 
being so naive that once we, once we figured out a way to make a thing, we kept making it the same way. And it was so extreme that our design, the top one was a different length than the bottom one. And rather than change anything, we just kept making it that way. And to differentiate, we drilled a little hole to say that this was the top and this is the bottom. I don't see it on this one. But anyway, there's a little bit of history to you know, encourage you that you, know, you can make a product without having a bunch of CNC machines. Uh, a, a bunch of, uh, you know, it wasn't really an amazing investment. You know, we just needed the flatbed deal and the chop saw. Labor. Yeah, and a lot of labor, a lot of time, the willingness to do it. Yeah, three inch ABS. So that's the original number one. Set that aside. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a 2.0-ish. All that we, we really are going to have left for people are the, uh, we've got some upgrade kits. Yeah, there's 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1 to 2.0. Yeah, we don't, we don't have any more, we don't have any more of the 1.0 upgrade kits because it's, it's all imperial and the 1.1 is all metric. And so that's a thing. Okay. I'm going to go ahead, set some parts aside, and I should get my glasses on because one thing you know, you know have to be careful not to scratch it. You know, it is a new thing. Okay. I probably could have pre-prepared some of these things, but one of the things that I do is I've never been a real fan of this Taiwanese cap nut. For some reason, it has a tendency. Now I have to find my. I've got so much junk over here that I don't, don't usually. One? Yeah, this one. Good old McMaster car. Okay, I changed that out because some of the the original ones just strip. Now I'm going to put some grease in there. That way, the head of it is is smooth when it impinges on the steel. Some of these uh, the things that you're going to be seeing in this are kind of like trade secrets. We've because been. This is the last one. You don't need to keep the secret anymore. Why? Why? It's all, and this is, you know, open source information now, so that's prepared. And we haven't really changed the tools that we use. To get these out, you kind of have to pull out on them and spin. And that should fall out. Last Pharos is going to a collector in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. A collector, which is fitting. A collector gets the last one. We should probably sign it, you know. Okay, so I pull off the bottom. And we don't need this anymore. That goes in our parts drawer. And there's the bottom. Now, the way we made this, th this funnel... This was an improvement over the ABS with this, the separate funnel, but it, it had some of the similar issues that, that this had to be really tight where the axle went through. And, and of course, it would leak coffee into the inner category. But anyway, that was our 1.1 improvement. Now, this is part of why we made it round. You'll see that converting a 1.1 to a 2.0 is just almost exactly like building a grinder from scratch. You know, I put these screws over here because Barb is going to help. 
because as you'll see, little by little, the grinder is going to lose its form. One of my assembly jig is over at the... I usually build these. I have a little corner over there where I've always built these things. But it's just not amenable to photography unless Barb was to stand outside in the cold and film through the window. <laughs> not likely. Okay. No, if you don't do anything wrong, I'll do it. Yeah, it's that, uh, it's a square. It's over on the left-hand side. It's a square piece of plastic, white. With the purple thing on it? With the purple thing on it. Okay. Now, as you see, it is just completely gone from a three-dimensional thing into a pile of parts. Okay. Now, the first thing I'll do is swap over the burr. I don't want to lose those. One, two, three. Are there four of them there, Burr? Where's number four? In the wrench? No, nope. there's four. Okay. The first thing I do Take that off. I take the key. We've got a whole drawer for those, that's for sure. Let me see. Here's the new axle. Now, the thing to check is that this has to slide on nicely. Now, some of these. Some of these were made with Loctite, which turns out to be a big mistake. And usually you can see if there is any Loctite. Because what you want is you want the burr, you want the burr to have just a little movement. You don't want the bird to be frozen in place. And the, the Loctite, it was enough to throw it off. If it's frozen in place, it doesn't really work as well. Okay, put the key in. All right. I want you to slide on. Can you hear that? Oh, here I get a microphone here. That's important. Remember the Comandante wobble? Remember when, when Comandante admitted that their burr wobbles? That's why it's important. That's the wobble. Anyway, all right. It's part of how the, the conical burr meshes with the outer ring burr. Right, it's self centers, and if, if everything is just hard, 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 the two burrs can not necessarily go together. Uh, and it's, it's self-centering in a way. Okay, where am I? Usually I do this in complete silence without, I'm not sitting there blabbing or being filmed. This is my jig. Ah, I forgot something else. No, I didn't. There it is. Like I said, all my tools are over on the other side of the room. Okay. And this may or may not be compelling, but I have. To, I always have to note to self: put burr in. <laughs> there have been quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> We put it together, and then you say, oh, I forgot the burr. Okay. Now, my springs, 
As it turns out, these springs are important uh, for assembly and, and alignment. But they don't function the way we thought they would function. Uh, when we first designed it, the, our, our first thought was that these springs, they were, gonna, they were gonna act like the springs, you know, on a big commercial grinder. Is that they were gonna give the, the, the outer burr the ability to float a little. Once again, it's that same effect, is that you want a little bit of movement in, in order for it to work out properly. But it didn't work that, we tried it with, with the float and it was a disaster. It, you couldn't even grind coffee with it. But as it turned out, the assembly, okay, that's the way it was before because you got some little marks from the, okay. Here's the part that you need a trusted associate. Where's my, where is it? Oh, here it is. This is the new lower bearing carrier. We have a, the jig for doing this without the trusted associate it happens to be in Taiwan. Our, one of our engineers, I think I got. Shit. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that. No, you weren't supposed to pull the burr out. It's, it's stuck. Well, that was different. Yeah. There, let's check it. It's a little tight. Let me redo this. The problem is that if we do a take two here, I have to put the whole thing all back together again. That's true. So I'll just proceed to bumble through. This won't look as professional, but as I said, it's the last one, so. Okay, try it again. You might have to give it a little push. There. Trusted associates puts the screws on. It the gets the nuts, nuts gone. On. Yeah, there's a there's a jig for compressing these plates sitting at the factory in Taiwan. Yeah, of we course. Forgot to tell them to include that. Right. It's a detail. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of stuff sitting in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. We haven't been back there for a couple of years because of COVID. Our espresso machines are sitting in Taiwan. Okay. Now you don't need the wrench because of the way that part's constructed. I make them tight and back off a half a turn. And those are the burr bolts that you're tightening. With. Right. This one's going to be stubborn. During this period of time that I've been, there it goes. That the head had to pop into the little square oh, slot. Little slot. During the time that I've been doing these upgrades, I generally kind of marvelled at. And how all these parts, something's kind of screwy. The trusted associate. How, running the camera and doing the board. Right. How all these parts that in some ways are not really high tolerance parts. Burr carrier, well, the... The... Parts of the grinder actually create its own burr carrier. The frame, make sure these are all half back. I'm talking rather than building. I want these to be backed off about the same amount. Yeah, that was right now. Because I want to be able to see there's play in the mechanism. 
Okay, I put on the little Teflon washer. I'll get this one started. Just get it on the thread. Specialized part, assembly ball. This is important. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I want this to be smooth. That means that this bearing, the top bushing and the bottom bushing are in, in alignment with one another. So that's smooth. Then put your finger down here on the bottom of the axle. And when you turn it, you can feel if that bottom of that axle is going up and down, if it's ponying, as we call it, it's not aligned. One side of the, of the inner burr, the cone burr is rubbing on the ring burr, and it's going up and down a little bit. So, to fix that, basically take it, and I'm using the cone burr, bashing it inside of the ring burr. And now I'm pulling back on it, and it feels even, and that's not moving up and down. And it's still smooth. So, so by hitting the assembly knob on the top, the cone burr pushes the ring burr just a tiny right. bit. And it, not, and it, it doesn't bash on the teeth because it's machined off on the edges. But you, you get it centered that way. Okay. Now, this won't... These, you have to insert these before you tighten up those burr bolts. Because once you tighten up the burr bolts, you can't get these in. Yeah. And now is when I check to make sure my little grommet, yeah, the grommet's in the right place. Okay. Now there's no reason for me to, there's no reason for me to tighten these yet because I, I don't have any way to set it down. It's, with the hand bent tab so they don't fall through the hole. Where's my bottom? Oh, there's the bottom right there. Okay. Now these, you just kind of turn them around and around and around. You pull out and it caught. So I can Pull out. There's a nut captured between the plate and in the cavity of the, the bottom. The right. Rubber. So you turn it until it gets started, and then you have to pull and turn it, pull out and turn at the same time. So the flange on the nut, it's got self. It's, it's, it's a flange nut, is what it's called. Yeah. So the flange nut gets enough friction against the plate, so you can tighten it. Do that until they tap you down. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these. Yeah, just about done, eh? I'm not appreciating the spiritual feeling of having this be the last one. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tighten those. I'm not going to... I just take up my other half because in comes the critical part. There's this whole 
fanaticism on home barista about aligning grinders. Okay. I've set that. Okay, that's at zero. I've set that back just... This is below espresso. You hear it? Somebody asked the question, can you align conical grinders? Everybody says, oh, no, no, no. They can't align conical grinders. It's, it's set at the factory. That's true on a lot of grinders. Okay, I got no, I have no rub, no sound. Which is like, okay, that's great. I'll take it. Okay, if you look at this line, all right. That's below espresso. Espresso is like a quarter of a turn. Okay, that's below espresso. It's too bad this went together so perfectly. I don't know. I think it's a good thing when they go together perfectly. Yeah, no sound, no rub. Okay. This is what the hammer's for. And the one that I put I built yesterday, which is going to England, uh, yesterday, the day before. It had really a bad rub on one side, and so if it, if that's the case, well, I just go ahead and show you. I'll screw up my beautiful grinder. There, it's rubbing hard on one side on that tight setting. Okay, this is not a problem, Barb. So if it does so. You just tap it back the other way. You tap it back the other way. Once again, it's so close. It's just a, a tiny hair above zero. You tap it back the other way until the, the rub is gone. That's the whole point about being able to align it, that you can align it by moving the ring burr around. And then once you do that, you finish tightening the burr bolts. Right all the way. And if you're, this is the point is that if you're having trouble, you set this back even farther and then you slowly reduce the gap. You'll set this at a half a turn and there's no rub. And then you get it closer and closer and closer until it's just a tiny, a tiny bit off zero. Tighten it up. No, no sound at all. Anyway, that's the hammer technique. And then I go ahead and take these and you tighten them opposite each other. Mm -hmm. Kind of standard shop practice. So they're real tight. Check it again. Done. Okay. That's now a 2.0-ish. It's the last one that I'll be building. It's been preserved for posterity. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your interest in the Pharaoh's hand coffee years. grinder. Yep. All these years, 13. Thank you. Mm-hmm.